Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Alright, so I felt like this was a good episode, but I also felt like there was things in this episode that, um, well, irked me. <sighs> Olivia. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. You know, I want to tell you the truth. When I read the description of the episode, I already knew. I knew that I was going to get pissed off at her. And, uh, well, she definitely did not disappoint me. That brung up the whole Leo thing, um, as far as seeing the specialist about maybe, you know, alluding to the fact that he may have autism. Olivia, I, I don't even know what to call her. And I'm trying to stay away from four-letter words, but it is so not easy the way she's handling it. You know? She's all like, there's nothing wrong with my son, and my son is just fine, he communicates perfectly, and yada, yada, yada. You know, just being really, like, defensive and confrontational. Like, Ned says something that was like... Really? Like, he says something that was, like, really horrible. And I get... The fact that, like, maybe she's scared. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what's going through her head. I'm not a mother. Um, I'm pretty sure she got emotions going on. But let's be honest, she's not doing herself or her son any favors by dismissing any sort of help or, you know, towards her son. So she gets all snappy and bitchy with Ned. No, it just gets worse. Because when Austin goes to the wedding with Maxine, he runs across he runs across Olivia, and Olivia is like in rare form. This woman, first of all, the fact that she gets so defensive when Austin's like, you know, how's your son and stuff like that, um, like she just starts looking at him like he's, well, dog poo at this point. And the fact that she came out of her mouth and was like, oh, you're trying to weasel your way into this family. I was like, sweetheart, you married your way into this family. What the hell are you talking about? Are you kidding? Mm. So, yeah, she gets a bitchy attitude with him as well. And I look at this whole thing and I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, sweetheart, the only person who's going to lose is your son. Because you're sitting there trying to reject. Y you won't listen to Ned. You're sitting there telling Austin that your son is perfect. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yo, listen, they're not sitting there coming at, from, coming at her from a place I hate or anything like that. They're just generally concerned. I mean, granted, this was not the first time that Olivia took this stance when Ned says something. But now it just got worse. And I'm just like, you know, the bravado or the attitude, the, whatever you want to sit there and call it. At the end of the day, your son is the only one that's going to lose. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, like, is it worth your pride or whatever, be, you know, whatever. I don't want to sit there and say whatever BS emotions you're, you're, you're going through because I'm pretty sure they're valid. But the way she's handling it is just piss poor. Um, and, and she just really got on my damn nerves today. And I, I, mm. I don't think anyone realizes just how much I'm holding back from just... <sighs> yeah, she got on my damn nerves today. Liz. Liz, Liz, Liz. <sighs> I'm going to be honest. Um, when I was doing the collab when with DC Soap Sanctuary. We were talking about character stuff. And we were talking about Liz. And, you know, I honestly tell you the truth, I said to him, I was like, yo, I don't, in the beginning, I didn't understand the hate, the anger, the hatred towards Liz. I didn't understand that. Not really. I mean, yeah, there's certain things that people don't like, but I mean, there was just, <sighs> comments were vicious. And I, I didn't understand it. Not fully. 
And then after watching some of the stuff that Liz did over the years, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, specifically lately, it's just been like, oh, yeah, I can, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I understand why people don't really like her too much. I mean, Maxie practically had to beg Liz. I mean, beg Liz and Terry for some odd reason to, you know, keep an eye out on Brit, you know, because it's Jason's, Jason's wedding day. And she's not, you know, she's not in a good place right now. She's not in a good place about that. She's worried about her mother. And, you know, Max is like, you know, just keep an eye on her and stuff like that. And they're both kind of looking at her like, they're looking at Max like, oh, like, why do I have to do that for? I'm like, Jesus Christ, Matt, um, Liz, like, I'm wondering what did, okay, what did Britt do to Liz? I, here's the thing. I know that she was a nightmare, okay? I know she was an absolute nightmare. She was a version of herself that I just couldn't respect. And it was mainly because she was, like, super obsessed with Patrick. Um, and, and I just can't respect that. I, I know that she was a nightmare, but I'm specifically wondering, what did she do to Liz? Because it was one point where Max was like, you know, isn't it a hospital to, like, heal and stuff like that? Like, she told them the situation and just both kind of standing like, should, should I do something? I mean, should we help? Like, should we be nice? Even after Maxie left, you see Britt looking at her phone, looking worried, looking sad, and you got Liz like, oh, well, you're, you're cold captain, or you're cold whatever, you know, I mean, I, I'll do whatever you, you know, I, I'll follow your lead. Like, it's like since it's saying, oh, well, if you want me to be a good person, then uh, maybe, I, maybe I'll be a good person. I mean, which is odd because she loves to sit there and judge everyone else like there's no tomorrow, but mm-mm, mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm, -mm. That woman... Anyway, long story short, um, Liz either makes an accident or an accident actually happens, I, I, don't, I don't know. But she does something and she's all like, oh, the backup files got erased and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, Britt was like, you know, use my card, awesome pizza, we're going to have a, you know, a long night. And she starts smiling a little bit because I feel like she kind of knew that they stuck around to hang out with her just because she wasn't, you know, in the best of moves or whatever. And I just was like, Terry. And, and, and that scene is almost like it, it, it took Terry backwards a little bit. I mean, she was all for at least trying to help, you know, as far as like working good at the hospital and stuff like that with her, you know, having a good relationship. But when Maxie was like, you know, maybe you could sit there and keep an eye on her, Terry just had that bizarre look like, why, why do I have to do that for? I can't be the only person that was just like, Terry, you were all about gun hole co captain crap. What, what, what happened? I'm gonna be honest. I did not give a damn about the conversation that um, I'm about to call him Chad Duel. Uh, Michael had with Jason. I didn't care. I honestly did not care. Um, you know, this whole time I'm sitting there looking at this, this, this wedding and, and watching those two talk to each other, and I'm like, okay, this, this can't just be me. I get that, you know, Michael, you know, Jason asked Michael to be the best man because, you know, it's like a son to him and everything else and yada, 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 watch him grow a baby, you know, all that good stuff. But... Not to sit there and say, like, that diminishes anything like that, but I felt like Spinelli should have been asked to be the best man. You know? I really feel like the, he should have been asked to be the best man. You know, they've been through so, so, so much, you know? Um, their ups, their downs, you know? And, and, it, and it's crazy when you go back and you watch some of the earlier stuff. And how much Jason really did not like Spinelli at all, you know. And now they, you know, now they sit there and act like they're practically brothers. So to sit there and be like, "Oh, Michael, you want to sit there and be the best man?" I don't know. I'll be honest. If if I was Spinelli, I I might I I I I actually be a little hurt. 
I'll be honest. I'll be a little hurt. Um, Spinelli came. He congratulated Jason on their wedding. And uh, I'm going to be honest. And I've said this before. And I know I sound like a broken record. But I, I, I don't really care about the wedding at all. If I haven't made that abundantly clear, I just, no. Hell, even a talk with, even a talk with, I was going to sit there and say, Laura Ray, even a talk with Carly and Jocelyn, I just did not care. I, I really didn't. There was one point where Jocelyn said something along the lines of thinking about Sonny, or Sonny's name came up. And Carly was like, yeah, I know, but today I'm marrying Jason, and, you know, I, yada 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 and I'm just like yeah you're marrying Sonny's best friend that's practically like a brother I I, I mean they were all happy and everything and I'm I'm like three seconds away from just like taking the control and just like tossing it on the floor cause I just that's how much I just really I'm not here for it at all I'm really not like there's times I was sitting there watching them talk and I was just like uh, can we just get this over with? Like, I just really... It was just nauseating sitting there watching those two talk or watching all four of them talk about Jason and Carly's stupid wedding. I, I just... I don't care. I really don't care. And I've, I've said that like a broken record. And I know that some people are probably annoyed with how much I just, you know, talk about how much I don't care. But unfortunately, this is day whatever of them and their stupid ass wedding so this is just this is just how I am and well I'm not even gonna try to hide it like I would like I would anyway Drew oh my goodness this guy's like a fresh it's like a breath of fresh air um so he's pretty much trying to bribe the guard you know he's trying to bribe the guard because at this point he's like yo listen my ticket is gone the nurse is gone She's probably either talking to the cops, or at a hotel, or doing something on the internet. And this whole place is going to get shut down. And um, you might want to sit there and get out of it alive. Because he realizes, he's like, yo, listen, you're a mercenary. You're about money. I got money. If this place is going to go down, you don't have any allegiance to these people. You just have allegiance to a dollar sign. And he's like, yo, I, I got that. It looks like towards the end of the episode that I feel like he's he's going to convince him to, um, you know, he's going to sit there and flip him. <sighs> it seems just so great. And it wasn't just great because, well, I pretty much didn't like the Carly and Son I mean, the, the Carly and Jack. The Carly and Jason stuff, oh my goodness. You know, I would rather her be with Jason. I mean, I'd rather her be with Jax at this point. Anyone stuff for Jason, but, you know, here we are. Um, yeah, no, his things was actually really good. Um, I feel like any, any sort of doubts that I had about Cameron being Jason was gone the minute, um, they started shooting his scenes. So, I'm with it. I'm all with it. Is Sunny Fireproof? So Sonny's about to sit there and break the window. But Jax is like, you know, if you do that, there could be a backdraft. I'm like, so, um, was he a, was, was he a firefighter too? No? Okay. All right. Whatever. So they decide to go through the back. They untie both of them. Okay. So they untie both of them. And then, you know, Jay, and then, you know, Sonny's like, hey, you know, you go, you take Phyllis. I got Nina. He sits there and he starts having this damn monologue with her. You know? I'm like, it's like he's trying to wake her up. I'm like, bro, the place is literally burning around you. Why don't you just pick her up and walk out the door? No, we're going to sit there and be like, I love you. Da 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 da. While the place is on fire. I'm like, I can't make this up. I mean, I don't have that much of a good imagination. This guy is literally sitting there in a burning building, just monologuing about how much he loves Nina, which, okay, 
I wonder how much you, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how you gonna sit there and feel about that when you realize she was lying to you, but whatever, sure. So he takes a slow, sweet time, gets her up, he starts talking, like they forgot there was a burning building, like they forgot they were in a burning building, and then they decide to start walking. Slowly, slowly walking. At this point, I mean, let's be honest, we are, we already knew what was going to wind up happening. And, I mean, they played it so slow that we can already see it coming. Sonny pushes Nina out the way, he gets hit by a beam, which is so funny because you heard like, you know, the crackling or whatever of like sound of wood about to like break at any point at any moment. And Sonny and Nina are just taking a slow, sweet time, like, like there's not a burning building. So he gets hit. Um, Jax comes, he takes Nina out outside. She's all like, you know, Sonny, 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 I can save him, I can save him. He gets her out. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, Jax, are you gonna go back in there? No, we're just gonna, just gonna let him burn, let him burn up. Okay, I guess we're gonna do that then. Um, I'm sitting there wondering, it was like, Jax, okay, you got her, you can go back in there. But then, then to be fair, to be fair, as much as I'm just like, get your ass back in there. Eh, he's a father. Uh, maybe he probably shouldn't go back in there in a burning building that's about to go up in flames. Um, but yeah, so he's outside, Phyllis is outside. Oh man, I can't wait to fill his tears into Nina. She is going to get all the smoke and I am all there for it. But yeah, Sonny is, um, you know, inside, trapped, and um, yeah. I think this is the last scene. This is pretty much when Sam comes in and she talks to Harmony and she kind of screws up by like just accusing her automatically that Harmony, you know, orchestrated Drew's, um, you know, abduction, his, you know, his, um, yeah, his plane crash and abduction. Now, granted, before she started talking, Harmony was already extremely super defensive. You know, she was already like, what do you want? What did I do? I didn't do anything. I, I just, you know, I'm in jail. I'm, I'm doing this, that, and the third. You know, she already started off at like eight. I'll sit there and say. Or, uh, yeah, eight. I'll, I'll sit there and say eight. Now, Dante tries to calm her down or whatever, but it's not to say, hey, listen, we need your help. Okay, cool. They're, they're coming to you for help. And then Sam is all like, well, you know... You have, you know, I, I, I wouldn't put it past you pretty much to um, orchestrate like an abduction or whatever. And so at this point, she pretty much accuses her. And, you know, Harmony's like, you know what, listen, I think visiting hours is over. Um, Y'all can just bounce, pretty much. And Alexis has to sit there and wind up saving, you know, like, because they, they came there for her help. And Alexis has to sit there and try to talk to her. Harmony to sit there and, um, you know, get her to sit there and try to help. You know, Sam is all like, yeah, I screwed that up. And Dante was like, yeah, well, kind of. You know, like, he didn't really sit there and say yes, but he didn't sit there and say no either. And I was, I was happy with that. I was really happy with that. I was so glad that Dante was going to be like, no, 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 I understand. You're emotional, yada, yada, yada. Like, that's the one thing sometimes I really don't like when people do. Um, when somebody messes up, and the best friend or the significant other doesn't really kind of call them out and be like, yeah, you kind of did. They just kind of just gloss over it like it didn't happen. Um, long story short, they did get a name. Which I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I don't rem really remember. I think it was something Russell. Um, was a guy that um, Shiloh dealt with. So that's who they're going to be snitching looking for. But, you know, Harmony was like, yo, listen, be careful. This guy's kind of shady. He's, he's pretty dangerous. And Sam was like, well, so are we. Okay, Sam. All right. I, I, I get it. You're, you're a quote-unquote badass. We get it. We're dangerous, too. The hell is... And Austin winds up going to the party with, um... Well, the wedding... Well, go to the wedding with Maxine. 
Yeah, that was pretty much about it. Anyway, I think that's pretty much about it. If I missed anything, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank everyone for watching. Be safe. See you in the next video.